today I'm going to make a video about the signs in the heavens for 2013 and how they correlate to the first seven chapters of Revelation. Um, I didn't find all of this myself. This is picked up from various places, various bits and pieces. I will immediately like to thank God, Jesus, Yahushua, the Holy Spirit, um, for the guidance that he's given me in this. But I'd also like to thank um, Scott from Rapture in the Air Now. I go too slow for you to see me. Uh, I'll put links um, for the bits and pieces they saw that led me in directions. William Tapley, the third eagle of the apocalypse, for finding the sign in 2017. And to Scott, eternal rhythm flow for the way he's expanded on things and shown more. Um, and today I will add today what, what I have found. Um, and let's get straight into it. I'm going to put a menu here because I've got no idea how long this video will be before I make it so that you can jump around if you've seen bits and pieces before if you don't want to see those again um, but I'm gonna lay it all out and uh, we'll see where we go so straight into it I thought I'd start by putting this whole chart up so that you can get an idea of where we're gonna go with this um, so if you've only got a couple of minutes and you can just watch this bit as a start uh, but I will unpack all of this as we go. We'll be starting with Revelation chapter 1, the picture of Jesus that happened at the beginning of March through to the end of May. Uh, looking at the hidings of Spica the moon, um, by the moon, which represents uh, Revelations chapter 2 and 3, the letters to the churches. We'll be looking at Comet Ison, the uh, Revelation chapter 7, the interlude and how that all fits together. Um, and we'll be looking at Trinity and the sending of the sun, not necessarily in the revelation, but still, I think, quite an impo important sign. The wedding on the Feast of Trumpets, uh, the birth of the sun from Virgo, and the sun entering Libra, which could mean judgment. And I shall also be looking at the sun and where it is during this time. So let's get straight in to the Revelation chapter 1 picture of Jesus. What we have here is the picture of Jesus from Revelation chapter 1, verses 12 through to 16. I shall read the Bible as I go through, um, and I'll show you which bits represent which. So, uh, chapter 12, verse 12, sorry. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. So we have Neptune, Mercury, Venus, Uranus... Mars and Jupiter and the Sun. So we have six planets and the Sun representing the seven golden lampstands. Um, and in the middle of the lampstands I saw one like a son of man clothed in a robe reaching to the, f to the feet and girded across his chest with a golden sash. And here we have in the same picture Orion representing the golden sash and the robe to his feet. His head and his hair were white, like white wool, like snow. Uh, just above it, we have um, Aries the ram, representing the hair white as snow. And his eyes were like a flame of fire. Here, over here, we have Jupiter, the king planet, in the eye of Taurus, representing the eyes of blazing fire. His feet were like burnished bronze when it's been made to glow in a furnace. If you read the book of Ezekiel, the feet of Taurus are like burnished bronze. And his voice was like the sound of many waters. Over here we have Aquarius representing his voice being many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars. Here we have the seven stars of Pleiades. And out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. And his face was like the sun shining in its strength. So, the sharp two-edged sword... We have two comets come through. Comet Pan Stars came through and Comet Lemon came through as well, representing the tongue like a two-edged sword. Now, this is interesting. Andromeda represents the chained woman, the church. So as Comet Pan Stars comes through, um, it breaks the chains of Andromeda while Jupiter is in the eye of Taurus with the eyes of blazing fire. If I take this forward and we watch uh, Comet Lemon come up the screen, um, all the planets move along, 
Comet Lemon comes up the screen and then breaks the chains of Andromeda on the 26th of May. By this stage, the Sun has replaced Jupiter in the eye of Taurus, making his face glow, shine, and his face was shining like the Sun in its strength from 16. So there you have the full picture of Jesus from Revelation chapter 1. This bit here is not actually from the Revelation. This may be my, uh, I'm adding things, but I think this is very important and to me it looks uh, full of meaning. Just after the sun has been in the eye of Taurus, we have Mercury, Jupiter and Venus all line up between the horns of Taurus, representing the Trinity. Um, and then as we take the sun forward, through to the 19th of June, the Sun and Jupiter have a conjunction together. So, and after that, so it's like the, uh, the King, Jupiter and the Sun coming together in the heavens. And then the Sun, Jupiter sends the Sun on. And we will see where that goes later. Right. We're going to look at the um, correlation between the Moon and Spica. Spica is a star in the left hand of the Virgin of Virgo, representing the wheat, as you can see here in Stellarium. On the 28th of March, the Moon, which was right at the beginning of the picture of Jesus, you'll see the Moon comes in and hides Spica. So, if the moon hadn't hidden Spica since 1995, where it did it once, and if you go forward, the moon won't hide Spica again till 2024, where it does it once. But the moon hides Spica four times this year. So the first time it hides it was on the 28th of March. You will notice that it is hidden. So let me show you the other four hidings, and then I'll show you the, how that correlates with the um, Revelation chapter 2 and 3, the letters to the churches. So that's the first one. Here we are on the 22nd of May. You'll notice that the moon is now only three quarters full as it comes through. But on the 22nd of May, we zoom in, the moon has hidden spiker again and we have a three quarter moon. Here we are on the 16th of July as the moon comes in and hides Spica again. I've gone slightly too far. Um, but you will see this time we have half a moon. I know where you're going with this. Um, and the fourth one. And here we are on the 8th of September, Rosh Hashanah. Uh, and as the moon comes in, you will notice we have almost no moon. We have but a, sl a slither of moon. Um, and this Rosh Hashanah hiding of the moon um, is an important one. So I've made a chart here um, which shows the hidings of Spica um, and when Spica wasn't hidden. So because we had the four hidings, which are the 28th of March, the 22nd of May, the 16th of July and the 8th of September, of course, between those, the moon also passed Spica, but it didn't hide them. Let's take you through one by one. So the first one represents the church at Ephesus, which God says must repent. So the Spica is hidden, hidden from glory. The reason Ephesus um, and the moon was 100%, a full moon, the reason Ephesus, Ephesus needs to repent is because they've left their first love. On the 28th of April 2013, the moon didn't hide Spica. This represents the church of Smyrna. And God says, stay faithful and there is no reproof. They don't need to repent. Um, so the church can see the glory. The third one, the church of Pergamos. You'll see where we're going with this. Um, Spica is hidden. It's hidden from glory because of their immorality. And God tells them they need to repent. On the 18th of June, the uh, Church of Thyatira, again, um, 
is not hidden from glory and we can see the moon that actually gets we've got about a 60 percent moon there uh, God says hold fast to what you have and he says there is no reproof for you on the 16th of July on the third hiding of Spica when we have a half moon this represents the church of Sardis God says they must repent because of their dead works on the 12th of August 2013 the moon did not hide Spica this represents the church of Philadelphia they were not hidden God says hold fast and he says there will be no reproof for them uh, there is an open door in heaven and then on the 8th of September 2013 which we'll be looking at in a minute which is uh, um, the amazing sign on Rosh Hashanah the spiker is hidden again hidden from glory representing the Laodicean church but God says are lukewarm and blind and they need to repent so you can see where the where Spiker is hidden by the moon on the first time, third time, five and seven, seventh churches, that is where the church needs to repent. And when Spiker is not hidden by the moon, um, for Smyrna, Thyatira and Philadelphia, God says there's no reproof, just stay faithful and hold fast to what you have. But let's move to this forward to the 8th of September, the last hiding of Spiker. It should also be noted while I'm here, the first hiding of Spiker comes at the beginning of the picture of Jesus that we've just looked at from Revelation chapter 1, and the second hiding of Spiker comes at the end of the picture of Jesus that we looked at from uh, Revelation chapter 1. Um, so that's Revelations chapter 2 and 3 representing the churches by the hidings and the not hidings of Spiker. The star in the left hand of the virgin the wheat representing the church next I'm going to take you into the amazing sign that happened on September the 8th um, September the 7th to the 8th Rosh Hashanah Jewish New Year 2013 the new moon should have appeared on the 4th of September as you can see down here but the moon was too close to the Sun I'm out there you could so you couldn't actually see the moon um, if we move forward to the fifth you'll see this moon is here just about there so the moon was also so close to the Sun it couldn't be seen if we move forward to the sixth I need to run the time forward a bit so the Sun oh my goodness I didn't want that to happen um, there you go the moon was still so close to the Sun that it couldn't be seen and finally on the 7th the moon was far enough away from the Sun so that this little slither of moon could be seen so Rosh Hashanah started on the 7th to the 8th of September now the amazing thing is the moon was hidden for three days it was hidden on the 4th the 5th and the 6th before it was seen the moon being hidden uh, represents of course three days in the grave three days of darkness three days being hidden uh, very significant and as the moon comes up on September the 8th this was the if we zoom in this was the final hiding of Spica again by the moon representing the Laodicean church let's move in so that the moon actually hides Spica and what you will see if we zoom out we are in Jerusalem here um, the hiding of the moon happens exactly as the Sun sets um, so on the Feast of Trumpets at the last Trump when the Sun sets is the final hiding of Spica by the moon um, so if I turn the ground off and I turn the atmosphere off so we can see all the stars again and we watch the moon if I take this forward to midnight at the oasis you will see at midnight on the Feast of Trumpets the Moon and Venus have a conjunction you have the church 
and the bright and morning star together at midnight on the Feast of Trumpets. Not only that, there being Venus has just been birthed out of the womb of Virgo. So I think that's quite beautiful. Now I'd look, like to look at chapter Revelation chapter 7, the interlude. Four angels standing at the four corners of the earth holding back the winds and another angel comes through and rises from the sun. So here we have Mars, we have Saturn, we have Mercury and Venus. Four angels around the sun. And you'll see here is Comet Ison starts coming in. So if I centre on the sun so it doesn't go all haywall, haywall, Mars is still just about over there. Let's zoom out a bit, keep Mars in. Uh, and we'll watch Comet Ison, which is here, come in. You'll notice it comes in from Leo, comes in through Virgo, narrowly misses. If I zoom in there, it narrowly misses Spiker. So it doesn't hide the church, but it's very much, it goes close to there. That's on the 18th of November. And as we carry on through, Comet Ison comes through and goes round the sun. It's gonna go off the screen, isn't it? Goes round the sun on the 28th of November, Hanukkah. So at that point there is where the angel rises from the sun. Comet Ison rises from the sun. What we know of Comet Ison so far is that um, it's like nothing we've ever seen before. We have a, I don't want to call it a mini solar system, but it's got a central core piece and it's got things revolving around it. So far its coma is 10 times the size of Earth. At the beginning of November, Comet Ison goes through Earth's orbit and at it, in January 2014 we go through the debris trail of this thing which could well um, cause the sixth seal um, fire and hail falling to Earth and burning up a third of Earth. I don't want to try and predict the future but from all of the things, all the signs that have happened so far in the heavens this Comet Ison fully represents the interlude in chapter 7 of Revelation. The four angels, the extra angel rising from the sun. I'd like to take us back and let's just follow the sun through its passage in the heavens. Now, of course, the sun does this every year. Um, but I think the extra bits and pieces, where they all fit in, the passage of the sun through the heavens is quite exciting as well. So here we are at the beginning of the picture of Jesus uh, in uh, 26th of March 2013, and the sun is in Pisces, representing the fish, the fisher, the fisher of men. In the middle of that sign, the sun moves into Aries, the ram, representing the ram, the sacrifice. And at the end of the picture of Jesus, as we had the sun in the eye of Taurus, also representing um, sacrifice, but the bull represents so much more. So that is during the picture of Jesus. Then let's click on the sun. Let's get the sun in the middle. Let's follow it forward. The sun passes through Gemini in June and July into Cancer. And then as we get into the beginning of September, where things start happening again, the sun is in Leo. We move into October. The sun moves into Virgo, the Virgin. And right at the end of October, the sun is birthed. On 21st of October, the sun is birthed from the womb of Virgo. Now, I'm not sure if there's anything in this, but at this point here, watch Mercury and the sun. Mercury and the sun swap places. Mercury goes back into Virgo and the sun moves into Libra. Maybe there's nothing in that, but I thought it was an interesting little uh, aside. And at this point here, 
November the 7th, the sun enters Libra. Libra, the scales, a time of judgment. Is this where the church is going to be judged? Is this where judgment starts on earth? I do not know. But the sun moves moves through the judgment uh, into Scorpio. And then if you follow it forward, of course, that's where Comet Ison comes round. If you follow it forward to the middle of January next year, you'll find the sun in Sagittarius, the archer. Is this where God's fiery arrows are shot to earth? So let's just pull this chart back up again. So we've looked at the picture of Jesus um, from Revelation chapter 1, which began at the beginning of end of March to the end of May, which also correlated to the first hiding of Spica by the moon. Uh, then we've looked at the seven hidings and non-hidings of Spica there, which ended at the beginning of September, which also correlated to the amazing picture of the wedding um, and the trumpets on the Feast of Trumpets. We've looked at Revelation, uh, Comet Ison, which goes round the sun uh, at the beginning of November on Hanukkah through to January the 2014, where we pass through Ison's debris trail. We looked at the birth of the sun from Virgo at the end of October and the sun entering Libra, representing judgment um, at, in the middle of November. And then also we looked at during the picture of Jesus, the sun was in the fish, so it was in Pisces, Aries and Taurus, representing the lamb, the sacrifice and the fish. And this area here, where again the sun was in Leo, representing the lion. The sun moved into Virgo, representing the virgin where the sun was birthed. And the sun moved into Libra, representing the judgment. And then the sun by Sagittari is in Sagittarius by January 2014, representing the archer. Quite an amazing picture. The only thing I haven't really touched on is Revelation 4, 5 and 6 which will happen in this window here if if all the other bits are in place um, but it's not an if they are in place so this is the time to be watching um, for the rapture the opening of the seals and all the other stuff which happens in Revelation 4 5 and 6 Well, thanks very much for watching. I hope you have been uh, truly blessed by uh, the information I presented today. I think the overwhelming thing is that it's now. The revelation is happening in the heavens above our heads now, this year. We've seen Revelation chapter 1, 2, 3. We know Revelation 7 is coming. 4, 5 and 6 the opening of the seals, the rapture of the church, the um, you know the revealing of the antichrist, the wars, the financial collapse—it's all before us. It's all coming in the next couple of months, according to the signs in the heavens. If you don't know Jesus, now is the time. Give your life to Jesus because this will be the most important thing you ever do in this life. Um, it is the answer to life. It is the meaning of life, having a relationship with Almighty God and knowing Jesus. So just to say thanks very much for watching. I hope you're truly blessed by the information here and you're as blown away by it as I am. Amen. Thanks a lot.